Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the ALG August Authoring and um, uh, Authoring and Adaptive Software Month. And thank you very much for attending. This is supporting our Textbook Transformation Grants new category that involves the radical transformation and creation of new materials. Um, I would like to thank uh, Cal Alford, Cindy Eller, and Heather Moorhead for being here from McGraw-Hill. If any of you had previously attended the uh, Reimagining the Textbook in-person event, um, we had a person who had taken our first ever USG published open textbook uh, for history and transformed it using McGraw-Hill Smartbook. And so when we started thinking of uh, transformative software, we definitely thought of McGraw-Hill. Um, just a couple of things before we start. Um, if you are attending, please make sure that your microphone is muted while the um, presentation is going on. This gets rid of things like ambient noise, uh, people bursting into your office. And for chat questions, if you want to send any, I'm going to be moderating that. Just please make sure that you change your send to to all panelists. If it goes to the host, it's only going to me. So that would be um, a lot easier so that all the panelists see your question at the same time. And with that, I am going to uh, turn this over to Heather Moorhead to get started. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. So welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Heather Moorhead. I'm a solutions architect with McGraw-Hill. I'm also joined by Cal Alford. He is uh, an executive project manager working on our learning science platform, which we'll be going through today. And uh, before we hop right into it, we want to cover today uh, exactly what is SmartBook. So we're going to use a couple of terms interchangeably. Uh, the learning science platform is the uh, platform in which our adaptive reading experience SmartBook lives. So uh, we'll be walking through the product called SmartBook, and then Cal will be giving you a little peek under the hood and walking through the platform itself and how the tool or product is authored. Um, and then we'll hop into some data and reporting and also allow time for Q&A. So with that, I am going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Perfect, great, thank you for confirming. All right, so um, I am going to be hopping into um, SmartBook in a second to do a quick overview. And before I, before I jump in, I just wanted to give a little bit of um, context to what we're, what we're looking at today. Um, so SmartBook has been available uh, now, or in the market now, for about over two years. We have uh, nearly a 1,000 different titles from McGraw-Hill that have lived in SmartBook. And uh, it's been really exciting because it's an adaptive reading experience for students. Um, because it's been around for, for a few years and we've collected a lot of data, uh, we're able to adapt to students um, as they work through their course, which is exciting. The most exciting piece of this to me is that we've taken this technology that's been proven and that we've been using exclusively at McGraw-Hill and we're now exploring ways to partner with institutions and allow you to use and build in this platform. And so we'll be talking a little bit later today, uh, but we actually partnered with Dalton State, specifically in US History One, um, and Sarah Mergle at Dalton State built a smart book around uh, a book that they're using there. So very exciting stuff happening. Um, but I just wanted to give a little bit of context there. So as we take a look at this, there's a few things we're going to be trying to tackle with SmartBook. So uh, we use the word adaptive, and many <laughs> organizations use that word. So let me just define how we think about adaptive at McGraw-Hill. So we're trying to accomplish a few things. The first is we're trying to fight knowledge decay. So we want students, as they learn new information, to actually be able to retain that information throughout the course. And so we know, uh, based on science and all the data we've collected, how we can present content to students in a way that helps them retain that information over time. 
the second piece we the second thing we're trying to do is take that content and move it from short term to working to long term memory. I'm going to show you in a minute what I mean by that as we go into an assignment uh, here in SmartBook. And then the the last piece is we want students to be able to recall the content they learn when they're under stress. So maybe they're taking an exam or participating in a discussion uh, in class or, or doing something during the lecture. We want them to be able to use the information that they've learned and actually be able to pull that back when they need it. So it doesn't really help if you cram for a test and then you spit that information out in the test and you, you don't have it anymore. It's important that they retain it in the long term and can use it when it's necessary for them. Okay, so with that, I'm going to uh, go ahead and hop into an assignment. SmartBook is designed around chapters. And so uh, in this particular case, okay, up here, we have different chapters of the text that are available. In my instructor, has chosen to assign chapter two to me, and it's due next week. I'm only 23% of the way complete, so I'm gonna jump in to the, to the assignment. All right, so we're looking at a couple of things right now, and I'm gonna pop out of this so we make our screen a little bigger. Um, there is a preview of the chapter that is organized based on uh, different objectives or, or organization of the course. I'm going to actually get rid of this so you can see the text. Um, but I'm assigned one chapter at a time that I'll complete on a due date. So there is a due date associated with all the smart book assignments. Um, when I first got in here, you also saw a little coach pop up. I've disabled her, but she does pop up and walk me through how to navigate the system and how to um, work through to complete my assignment. So as I enter the chapter into Smart in SmartBook, you'll see um, this this looks just like the physical text or the ebook that I'm, I'm familiar with. Uh, you'll see uh, diagrams, images, just like you would in a traditional book. The difference here is that you'll notice that the the book is highlighted. So um, I'm seeing highlights, and you'll be happy to know I did not create these highlights myself. Uh, these actually come from the authoring tool, authors and subject matter experts set up these highlights to direct students uh, to what content and objectives they need to master in the, in the course. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. And as I read through, I will not be directed to read everything at once. Only I'm only going to be um, presented information that is impactful, me, impactful for me to read at this point in time. So it could be new information I need to learn, could be information that I have um, tried in the past, tried to prove and I know, but I haven't gotten it yet, so it presents it back to me. But the highlights in SmartBook are customized or personalized to that particular student. And so what's gonna happen is I read through these yellow highlights, and you'll see the rest of the text is dimmed out, not because it's not important, but because right now it's directing me to focus on the material that is most important for me right now. Now, if I click on the book, it will it does turn on, so it's all there for me. Um, but I'm directing the reading, so it's a little different. You're not reading in a linear fashion. You're reading uh, in a way to really build that foundation and expand upon it. Okay? You'll notice here on the left corner, practice icon has started to flash. That's because it's time to now practice what I've been reading. So we'll be asked questions that are directly related to the highlights that I've been presented. So at this point, I need to answer to prove that I actually understand what I've been reading. And for an example, let me just get one wrong for you. This is much easier for me to get the wrong than right. Okay. Um, and I know this is wrong because this is not. Okay. And I'm going to rate my confidence. I'll talk more about this in a second. And then I have to submit my answer. And you can see that is not what they were looking for. <laughs> it tells me that why I was, what I was incorrect with. So I wrote seller and buyers instead of free market. Um, it's giving me the right answer because I'm in a study mode. And uh, because uh, SmartBook wants you to learn this content, right? So this is not an assessment. This is a learning tool. And what's going to happen now is now that I'm presented with this correct information, 
I'm going to still have to prove I know this at some point. So I'm going to be asked another question about this, but it's not going to come next because I will have remembered this answer. It's likely to come back uh, the moment before I forget it. So we're trying to bring back that information before students forget something so that they can actually move it from short term to working to long term memory. Okay. So a few points here, um, and then we'll move on to some reporting. So when I, you'll see a, a number of different question types inside of SmartBook. We just saw fill in the blank. Here's a check all that apply. There are multiple choice, uh, drag and drop, matching, ordering, different types of questions. Uh, as students work through this, the questions become personalized to them because what the questions I'm getting wrong are very different than the questions that Cal might be getting wrong. And so what I'm presented with are the things that I still need to learn. When I see a question and get something wrong, I will be presented with that same material in a different format likely. So if I answered a true, false, wrong, the next time I see that, I'm likely to see a different question type. We're never gonna give students the same type of question right in a row, um, and that's something that's done on the authoring side. Before students answer a question, they rate their competence. And we use this to determine students' comfort level, uh, but we also use it to uh, help the system adapt to that particular student. So it's very different if you say you know something and get it wrong versus saying you're unsure and getting it wrong. So we, we capture all of these data points that help direct the system to lead the student to the most effective and productive study session that they can have. And at any point, the students can always go back and click read about this. It will direct them to the page of the book in which that concept was covered. We'll know they use that assistance, but it gives them a clear line to figure out where is this content coming from and how do I, how do I go back and learn it. Okay. So students will go in between reading and practicing to complete their assignment. Um, and it's set up based on the number of items that uh, instructors want students to master by the end of the course. You'll see here that on this page, I have some highlights in yellow and some in green. The yellow highlights are because I have not learned this material yet, have not pro proven I know it. Green means that I have answered a question correctly, and I shouldn't be spending my time here right now. I should be spending my time on the yellow highlights. The highlights change over time. So what I, am, what I know right now may not be what I know in three weeks but it also changes as I work through. So this may be highlighted now for me, and on the next, after I learn this, something else in the chapter may be highlighted. So they continually adapt to making a personalized reading experience and directing me through the assignment and the chapter. Let me pause for a second and see if there's any questions before I move on to the, show the reporting. We don't have any in chat so far. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, as students work through this, there are a number of reports that are available to them, and the same reports are available to instructors for the class as a whole. So students can see their progress throughout the chapter and how um, much more work they have to do. Um, they can also see the sections they struggle with, but in particular, I wanna point out a couple of reports they can see every question they get wrong. Try this question again at any point. So if I click on this, it's just gonna open it up and let me try the question again. And it's a great built-in study tool. You can also see the learning objectives I struggled with. So as an instructor, I'm looking at it as a student, but the instructors will see the learning objectives their entire class struggled with. So if you know your your class is struggling with how free markets work, you now can adjust your lecture time to make sure you emphasize these particular points or objectives. And at any point, students can um, you know, see how their confidence is too. So how, how are they as a student? Are you overconfident? Are you underconfident? And um, instructors can also see this for their class. All right. Oh, let me hop back out of there. Um, any questions there? And I, I'm right now I just popped into Connect. This is part of our Connect platform. So these, these assignments are assignable 
They do integrate with, um, through single sign-on and GradeSync with D2L. And um, in 2017, we'll have deep linking where within D2L, uh, you'll be able to have each SmartBook assignment live among your D2L assignments as well. So if there's no questions, I'm going to stop sharing, and I will pass it over to Cal to walk through how we build one of these smart books. All right. <clears throat> screen there. Yes. All right. All right. So Heather just ran through uh, a smart book and, and what it does and, and how students interact with it, the reporting behind it and all that. What I want to do now is uh, show you how we go about building uh, a smart book. And uh, there, whenever you get into the chapters, there's a, a three-step approach that we, we take. But before I do that, what you're looking at here is um, our annotate tool, and that's the platform that we use to build out the smart book uh, at the chapter level. And then once we're done with it, we deploy it. It then goes uh, and gets compiled into the smart book, and it becomes available for view. And so when we first get going with uh, building, what we do is we grab all of the chapters of the textbook, all of the material from the textbook, and we load it into into our annotate system. And what you're looking at here is a sandbox area where I've loaded a whole number of, of chapters that I've been working with in different ways and, and uh, testing out different things. And so what I'm going to do is jump into a chapter and show you how we begin to build um, uh, a smart book out uh, uh, for you. So what we'll do is I'm going to click on a chapter here. And what I'm going to do is show you the dashboard here real quick, and then we'll begin to dive into it. And, and what's really important when you're building out a chapter in, and you're getting started with it is you really want to focus on your content, uh, your content tree over here off to the left side. And to see that, you, you would click on your CLOs. And that's going to, I always keep that up whenever I'm working with it. But the three steps that we want to do is first we want to set up our headings and our sections. The next thing that we'll want to do after we do all of that is go in and set up our LOs, our learning objectives. After we set that structure up, we then go in and we'll create our probes. So what I'm going to do right now is jump in and set up some headings in, um, in this chapter. I'm not going to do a bunch of them. I'm just going to go through a few and show you how the content tree will begin to um, structure there. So. Um, the first thing you want to do is set up your chapter heading. And I went ahead and did that before we got started here so we would know where we'd be clicking on some things. So now I'm going to go in and start looking at some of the sections. So here's the first section, and I'm going to stay at the section level. I'm not going to go at the sub, sub or sub sub section levels. So you'll hide, you'll go in to the PDF, you'll make sure that you have the HD uh, click. Then you'll go and you'll highlight what it is that you want to set up as a section. You'll make sure it says section here. The what's going to populate shows up in green here. You go ahead and hit save. Boom. It begins to save over here. I'm going to then go to the next one. And at first, as you're going through it, you're going to click page to page and review it and look at it. up, make sure the section is populating, so save, and I know the next one's on page 10. So now we've set up our, um, our sections up under the chapter so far. I'm only going to go to the first, uh, first three here. And when we get done, I'll go over to a full chapter and I'll show you the, the content tree there that I've been working on. 
um, so you can see the full chapter. And what's nice about this is you can go back, back page by page, or you can just go ahead and click on it, and it takes you right back to the beginning. Um, so now once you have all of your headings set, the next thing you want to do is start isolating the highlighting for the reading and set up the, um, the learning objectives. And so what to do that, you just go ahead and click on LO. And as I'm looking at this here, as a sub, let's say, for example, I'm a subject matter expert in the area of uh, organizational behavior, and I'm reading through this and setting up the C book, uh, smart book. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, this is important content. I'm going to go ahead and highlight it. And then I'm going to create a learning objective that is specifically associated with this reading. So let's see here. Uh, so, Okay, now what it's going to do is it's going to show me the uh, learning objective that I just created, the highlighted content. Now what I need to do is set a priority. And how I like to look at the priorities is in the structure of a house. And I would like to say that level one is the foundation of a house. Level two is the foundation of the house plus the framing of the house. And the structure is starting to be built and, and and come up. And level three is the completed structure of the house. And so what I, how I like to look at it that way is, all right, when I'm looking at my priority and I'm setting up um, the LOs initially, I look at it and say, okay, this is actually foundational material that students will need to build concepts on. So I'm going to say it's a level one. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. And then I'm going to go to, I'm reading along here as a subject matter expert, and I decide that this is this is important content for the students to read and build on. I'm going to create a second learning objective. So, concept. And I look at that and I want to set the priority, and I feel like that's a priority one as well. So I go ahead and set it and save it. I'm going to go to the next. I'm going to create a couple more learning objectives here. And so I'm, I get into the second one. The second section here. I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to create. And I'm going to say that this is a, a level two. This is um, a, the second thing that students are going to begin to build on after they get the first concept. And what this is going to, the priority level helps the smart book determine what to highlight first for the students as they complete and um, uh, are successful with that content. They can then, that turns green. And then the next layer, the level two, will begin to show up for them, or the priority two will begin to show up for them. So, uh, so now I'm going to do, do one more here. This is a priority one. This is foundational material that you need to build on. I'm going to tell it to save. So now, as you begin to see over here on the left side in the content tree, the 
sections that we set up and the objectives that we set up under those sections are starting to starting to build out. What's nice with that is as you're building along and you, and you keep it in this view, you always know where to uh, where to go if you get lost or somebody starts asking you some questions. You begin to focus, look in here, you'll see what's posted. You go exactly to that and, and begin to work on it and if you're working with a reviewer or something like that. So I've set up the headings and the sections and the LOs. Now what I'm going to do is show you how to go and produce a probe. And so I'm going to go back to beginning up here and start with probes. And so you, you click on your probe uh, tab here. It'll pull up over here on the right side. And what you do is you click Add a probe. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull up all the options you have available to make probes. And uh, you can you can shake it up any way you want. If you want to do fill in the blanks, uh, multiple choice, uh, deconstruct, multi-answer, ranking, multi-probes, matching. For this one, I'm going to go ahead and do a fill in the blank. There we go. I'll show you how to do. I'll do uh, do two, maybe three of these, and show you, and then we can go over and look at a, a completed chapter here. The one that's almost done. Let's see. Fill in the blank. I'm going to say. To make the blank. So these and so period. We're going to go down here. I'm going to insert the answer. And you can offer up remediation here, essentially saying we know this, this is the correct answer, and offering up something of why this is uh, this is the correct answer. Make a comment to the student about uh, this is um, it, it all comes out to being an individual or something to that effect. Um, so what I like to do at this point is say, okay, here is the probe that I've produced. Is it assessing the um, learning objective that I created, and is that reading that we've highlighted supporting all of that? And if I can get that, if I can say yes across the board there, then I go ahead and say, all right, we're doing good. And I accept the changes. And I'm ready to make a second probe. And so what we like to do is every time we highlight some content here for the student to read, we produce a learning objective, and we like to produce two probes. So we have two different ways to verify if the student is really understanding the, the concept being covered there. So I'm going to add a second probe. And this one will be, I'm going to go multiple choice. And what's nice here is you, whenever, whichever one you click on, it offers you up some directions here of how to build out that probe. And then one thing that we offer to build on top of this is we have some, uh, some additional probe directions talking about it how to set them up, all the way to some additional things you need to keep in mind in certain content areas and stuff. So I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to go ahead and create it here. And a number experts. Here. 
And then I add one more. Culture. And for each of these, you can add remediation, uh, telling them why that is not correct. And then I'm going to give it the test again real quick. I'm going to look at the probe. I'm going to make sure that it is uh, assessing an objective. I'm going to make sure that the readings are actually covering this. It looks good. I'm going to say OK and accept. And I move on to the next. And so what you begin to see over here, let's go back over to the content tree in a second. We're looking at the section that we're working in, the objective. I have two probes produced for it. And I'm ready to move on to the next. So if you end here and you decide to come back into it, you can always go back and pick up where you left off. So I'm going to do, I'll do one more probe here for this objective. And then I'm going to go over to the um, uh, chapter that's been uh, fleshed out a little bit more here. So this one will be a uh, exam. Okay, I'm going to add a pro. I'm going to go fill in the blank. It's giving me directions if I need it. I'm going to say OK here. I'm going to create the blank. There we go. Again, you can offer up the remediation. I'm seeing the connection of the probe to the uh, learning objective to the readings. Everything's looking good. And I go ahead and accept the changes. All right. So it's really, really that simple to, to do the authoring. You really want to set up your headings first, create your LOs, the priority levels, and then go and start to produce your probes. Now, let's say, for example, you get going through all of this and uh, you, you've gone through the whole chapter and you say, OK, I just read through the whole chapter. I see how it builds. I need to go back and uh, I need to look at the objective for, uh, for the characteristics of self because I need to see how that builds. And so you go ahead and hit the edit. And you say, okay, I got it at a priority one. That's good. And so you can always go and adjust your priority level after the fact or any time. Or you can adjust the LO any time. So I don't want you to think that once you set up your LOs, they're set. You can set them up and you can modify them and change them and adjust them as, as you see fit there. So what I'm going to do now is go back and I'm going to show you a full chapter or a chapter that I'm in the middle of working on right now, and the structure tree and how we communicate and do some things in there. All right, so here's the chapter that we're in the middle of working on. And you'll see that we have the, uh, the content tree over here. We got the... Uh, Chapter heading, it gets into the sections. Uh, I've got uh, the LOs and the probes produced. I've got this one here where uh, I had uh, someone ask me some questions on it. I answered those questions, and now it's ready for review. Here's one that uh, we took a look at, and it's already been reviewed, and it got, uh, it got an approval on it. And then here is content that I'm still working on and uh, how it's set up there. So what we'll do, what usually happens, and the, the process can, can vary, is you have an authoring SME, and then you'll involve a review SME. And the authoring SME will go ahead and write the content and the, the LOs and the, and the probes. And the review SME will go in and take a look at it and offer up feedback, assistance, uh, some direction, or help them 
think about something and keep it in perspective. And that dialogue can take place within the system here. So you can catch all of that. And uh, there's a to-do list area here that will help you look at all of that and keep track of it. And, and if you if the the content tree just gets gets too large for you because you've gone to sub and sub and sub subsections, um, this is a great area to go into and look at it so you can begin to work through uh, questions and issues that pop up there. And uh, once you get all of your chapters done and complete, your, um, your smart book is ready to be deployed and then compiled and ready to go into the smart book for you to use. And so now what I wanted to do is take you over to um, some content that uh, has been produced. So they, they created a custom smart book here. And uh, it's, the, it's the Dalton State History one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into a chapter that, um, uh, well, this textbook has been used. And I believe it has been used in, in two pilots so far. So they've been able to capture some data, which is great. So you've completed your, let's imagine a minute, you've completed your smart book. Um, you now, it's been, you've taught with it for a couple of sections or a couple of semesters. And now it's time to really take a look at some of that reporting that Heather was talking through earlier and look at your course where, where students really engage with it, where they're using it, uh, confidence level, looking at all of that stuff. And then what you can do is now come into the course or the, I'm sorry, the, uh, the smart book and go to a tool, tools area, and use what we call the heat map. And the heat map allows us to really dig into the learning objectives and the probes that we produced here. And it's probably shown up really, <clears throat> excuse me, really uh, small here. So what I did is I took a screenshot of it, and I'm going to expand it out for you. And so in the heat map, what it does is it says, okay, here is some highlighted content the students need to read. We created an LO around it and two probes. And in that uh, section, there were 242 attempts at this section of highlighted content. 46% of those students were able to get it correct. And they were able to get it correct in 30 seconds. So we'll go down a little bit further here and we'll look at another one where same thing, some selected content. We created an LO and two probes. There are 182 uh, attempts at this, uh, this highlighted content. Of that, 68% were able to get it correct, and they were able to get it correct in 27 seconds. And then we'll take a look at one more here, and then I'll talk about a little bit more about the, the highlights and stuff. Here's the third one uh, that we're looking at. Uh, 222 attempts, 42% of the students that, of that 222, uh, got it correct, and they got it correct in 29 seconds. So let me talk a little bit about the, the highlighting. How, how we have the highlighting structured in the, um, uh, heat map is if it if it's going to show up as green, that means that 80% or better of the attempts got it correct. If it's going to be yellow, it's going to be 70 to 80% of the attempts. Orange is going to be between 60 and 70. Red is going to be 60% or below. And um, so what you really want to be focusing on at first when you're using the uh, the information from the reporting from SmartBook, and then looking at um, <clears throat> the heat map, you want to be looking at the red and the orange first, and then moving into the yellow and the green highlights to see what you need to do there. Sometimes, when you're looking at the front end of, uh, of the reporting in, in the SmartBook, it becomes really clear what, what you probably need to do. Sometimes you need to expand um, the content that students need to read. Sometimes you need to modify the um, 
the learning objective, sometimes you need to adjust the priority. Um, you need to make that a level one. That's more foundational material that they need to learn before they begin to build on top of it. So you'll use the reporting from the front end to help you really look at what's going on here and what you need to, to do and change. Um, this is a, a great tool. Uh, we work with faculty all the time that are working with uh, custom smart books to um, dig in with this and, and figure out what it is they need to improve or they need to expand on or what do they, what do they, maybe they need to do something different with their course the way that they're, they're covering some concepts. So I, uh, I, recommend, I recommend using this. So let me go and pause right there. I've talked about how we develop out the smart book at the chapter level, uh, talked about deploying it, talked a little bit about looking at some of the data after it's being used. Are there any questions at this point uh, in and around the development piece of it that I can answer? I'm not seeing any through chat yet, but if you have any questions, please type them into chat or uh, use your microphone. Okay. Well, if there are no questions, um, I, that's really all that I was going to cover. And, and at this level of things, um, the the McGraw-Hill team, we make ourselves available to, to talk through different content situations that you have, uh, different ways that you're, you're visualized using the smart book or other resources in an adaptive environment. Um, and if you'd love to bounce those up, uh, on us, um, catch up with us. I know that Mark, uh, Michelle with our enterprise team and uh, Cindy Elder, um, they, you can talk with them. They can come and talk to us about things or catch up with any member of the sales team out there and tell me you'd like you saw this, you'd like to talk a little bit further about how to use the tool with the different ways and ideas that you have in mind. And uh, uh, let me ask Heather real quick. Uh, I, Heather, I jumped into this. I was uh, looking at the development aspect. Are there any things that you'd like me to address a little further since we have a, we have a little bit more time and no questions. I think that is all I have. Um, Cindy, anything else on your end? All right. All right. Sounds like nothing there. And uh, I on a. Going back to our slide there, my, I know Mark Michelle is our uh, Enterprise Solution Director. Um, he, we have his contact information there. If uh, uh, Jeff, I need, need to pull up the presentation there. Do you have it? Um, okay, so oh, what you would slide. do is stop sharing at this point, so hit return at the top of the screen. Okay, well, I'll, I'll do that. All right. Just got it. It's trying to oh, think. Oh, you got it. There. Okay. there we go. Mm -hmm. And then uh, go to the last slide there, and that's Mark's uh, contact information. Okay. Uh, if you want to do that, you can click on the arrows that are right on the top of the slide. Okay. Um. We might have different views here. I'll move it here. Okay. There we go. One? Okay. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. And uh, if yeah, if that's if there's no other questions or anything, um, again, I make myself available. Our team makes herself available to talk through different ways to use the uh, adaptive tools and uh, can answer any questions. Give us a call. Yeah, so feel free to type any questions you might have into chat. Hey, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Uh, you have my phone number wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> it, it's uh, 0607. Sorry about that, Mark. No problem. 
And if you have any questions about uh, grants, about the program, feel free to send them to me at jeff.gallant at usg.edu. Um, I am going to start wrapping this up because I don't think we have any questions. But if any do come in, uh, we will definitely address them. And I want to make sure that I have this ready for you. Yes. Okay, so there's a clickable link to our survey. Uh, please fill out this post-event survey so that we know how we're doing and how we can improve. Um, that will be very helpful to us. Uh, this will be archived on the site uh, very shortly. We've just added the first three archived events. Uh, SoftChalk hosted their own, so we'll have to get in contact with them. Um, thank you all for coming. and. Please send any questions to either the McGraw-Hill team or to me, and I can always forward them to the right person. Thank you all for presenting today, uh, Cal, Cindy, and Heather. Thank you for your time. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.